Welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast, made for women who want their healthiest years to be ahead of them, not behind them. Join your host, Courtney Townley, right now as she breaks down the fairy tale health story you have been chasing all of your life into sensible action steps and lasting change. Welcome to the Grace and Grit Podcast. This is your host, Courtney Townley. Thank you so much for being here with me. I have an awesome treat in store for you today. My friend and nervous system expert, Irene Lyon, is back on the show, and I could not be more excited to share our interview with you. I'm going to be honest with you. When I first came across Irene's work over six years ago, I was simultaneously enthralled and kind of ticked off. Let me explain. By the time I discovered Irene's work, I had been in the health and wellness industry for close to 20 years. And in all the courses I had taken, brilliant teachers I had worked with, reading I had done, do you know how often I came across information about how trauma influences the health of a human? Never. No one was talking about it in the circles I was traveling in. And I was traveling in a lot of circles in the wellness industry. When I started to study Irene's work, it became so clear to me that the health of the nervous system is a very big deal when we're talking about improving the health of a human. Irene has reminded me yet again that there are so many layers to the health equation. And her teachings have allowed me to go deeper into my own health journey and simultaneously help my clients do the same. So I'm delighted to have her here to share her wisdom with you. Let's dive in. Irene Lyon, welcome back to the Grace and Grit podcast. Courtney, hello. It's so good to be here. (laughs) I have to tell you that it's been, it's always such a privilege to watch your work sort of spread like wildfire. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you a few things, like part of the reason I always invite you back to the show and I had you involved in the Confident Women Rising Summit last year is because you are one of those rare birds that has a lot of experience as an athlete Mm -hmm. in exercise science, Mm -hmm. in fitness, Mm -hmm. but then also in this whole world of somatic work. Plus you're a human going through your own human experience, which you're always very transparent about. And I love so much. (laughs) And I have to tell you, Irene, you really give me hope for humanity because you're, you are, you, the layer of healing that you are pollinating Mm. into the world is it's, it's everything. And, and that's actually not an easy thing for me to admit because the journey that I've taken through the wellness industry really took me so far from the work that you do. And I think that's what honestly attracted me to your work initially is I was like, okay, I I know truth when I hear it, Mm -hmm. you know, you kind of like something resonates in your body and, and then following your work for the past several years, it just, more and more truth is exposed that, wow, this really is the foundation. This is really the foundation of healing and of health. Yeah. So thank you for being here today. And I, you know, you know, a little bit about the world, the work that I do in the world, which is really around behavior change Mm -hmm. and behavior change. I have found as important as it is, and we all want it. It's really hard to do when you have a dysregulated nervous system. A hundred percent. Yeah. So let's maybe set the stage for this conversation because there's a lot of places I want to hopefully go here. I, after being exposed to your work, taking your courses, I really see the work that you're doing as such a heightened level of awareness. I am so much more aware of my own internal landscape, Mm -hmm. how I move through the world in my environment the connection of my brain to my body and my body to my brain. 
So to me, it's just, it, it's very much a heightened state of awareness. Yeah. And yet we so often hear awareness talked about like, I don't know, something much more superficial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So can you speak to that a little bit just mm-hmm. about the mm-hmm. awareness within this work and, yeah. and how it is such a, it's a linchpin to the work. That's a great word. Well, it's interesting because I mean, I haven't watched or list our, our last interview from five years ago, yeah. but I can, I can sense, cause we're always texting on Instagram back and forth and I was on the show, but there is a level of regulation in your system that I'm sensing that I didn't sense when I first met you. And I say that with all like respect and just, I can feel that your system is in a different, at a different level of regulation. I love Not it. that I you like didn't have it. base level, you know, cause you were functional and mother and all that, but yeah, there's a, there's something that's different. Yeah. So I'm just going to name that. Love it. Um, You know, it's funny. I always forget about the fitness stuff because yeah, I was high level in my twenties. And I don't know. I mean, I know that I got through those years because I was very fit and very, um, agile and I just grew up on figure skates and skis and canoeing and hiking and at the squash club with my dad like that was my world but I also got a lot of injuries which ironically led me to the somatic work so one could say that I needed to go through that path to get to this point 20 years later after I graduated from seven years of university learning science about the body right? It just, it blows my mind that it took so long for me to get to, wow, I just spent seven years learning about the body Mm -hmm. and I know how to teach people how to move their body, but I have no idea what awareness is (laughs) of the body. I'm like, how is that possible? I've just been lucky, but I wasn't lucky because I kept getting injured. Yeah. Right. And I had a relationship that didn't work and it wasn't abusive in any way, but it was just not the right fit. And And so here we are. And so I think what humans forget, or maybe we just don't realize because we're so driven by industry and tech and we've been domesticated, you know, which is like a long story of human revolution, evolution, whatever you want to call it, is we don't realize that we are nature. Just put a pin in that one. Right. Yeah. It's, it's organic. Like we, I was teaching the other day drop in class, which I do once a month with my people or anyone can come. And we were talking about the elements of air and and earth and fire and ether and, and, and water. And to really think like when we breathe, we, we really don't have to think about it. And we have this whole world of breath work now, which there is a purpose for it. Mm -hmm. I agree. But if we just stop to think, wow, there's this air that we can't see that has oxygen. We need it. If we don't have air, we're gone pretty quickly. Yeah. Just like other animals. Yeah. And then, of course, you have the plants that do the opposite. You know, they create that for us and and they also suck in other things. and, And then we suck in toxins and it affects us. And so to me, like awareness can be lots of things. It can be movement. It can be understanding our stress response that we even have a stress response because a lot of people don't even know they're in a high level of dysregulation and stress, which we can get into. But just this basic fact that, holy cow, we're nature, we're carbon, hydrogen, and all the other elements and minerals. That's why we have to eat. If we were machines, we wouldn't have to eat and drink and we wouldn't have poop and pee and sweat and smell and all these things. So there's something to me, the word word awareness kind of got hijacked by the mindfulness industry, which is a fine industry, but it also is missing the mark on our biology. Yeah. And when we get the biology on board and I now have enough uh, street cred, enough experience. You definitely have street cred. I've seen enough people. I've heard enough stories. I've seen my own experiences. If if we don't get that part on board, everything is nice. And yes, we have to do all those other things. I believe food, exercise, 
meditation, all that. But if we don't have this base, like everything is just on, on shaky foundation. A hundred percent. Yeah. And and I really appreciate that you, like you were opened with that word domestication. Oh yeah. Because it's so interesting. I, I've recently been revisiting a lot of Katie Bowman's work. Oh, I don't know who that is. And you don't know Kate. Oh, you would love her. Mm-hmm. She's a biomechanist and she talks okay. a lot about, you know, modern day society separating us from the natural world Uh and what the impact that has had on us on a biological level Mm -hmm. and that we are nature and that we have to have ways of coming back to our natural state Mm -hmm. if we want to be healthy. And your work is such a powerful gateway for doing that. Mm -hmm. So can we talk a little bit? I, I want to just be in case somebody's really new to your work, they don't necessarily yeah. heard the word trauma, but they don't necessarily know what it is. Mm-hmm. Let's start mm-hmm. by defining what trauma actually is. Sure. So I kind of have a regular spiel for this, and I think it's important. So I'll and I like yeah, great. talking about it. So there's t- there's t- two types of well, there's many types, but I'm going to distinguish two types first. So I love a good old hospital show, you know. ER was what I watched when I was okay, younger too. with Clooney and all that and, and Grey's Anatomy. Yes, a little, it's okay. Um, but you know, people have a trauma. They go to the hospital, go to the trauma wing. I'm a trauma surgeon, blood's everywhere. We got a fix patch. So that's trauma also. But then there's this trauma that is at what we would call in my work, the nervous system level. So the autonomic nervous system level. And that has a lot of different categories. It could be shock trauma, like an accident, an abuse, like rape, physical abuse. Um, It could be um, early trauma, developmental trauma. So being born preemie is actually very traumatic on the human system. Um, And this is going to sound weird, especially if you survive. In the wild, that little one wouldn't survive. Yeah. Right? Animal kingdom. And so humans, because of our industry... And our creations of modern medicine, we have this conundrum with the amount of trauma that we have to live with because we're surviving past what the natural world would deem appropriate, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yes. But I'm all for modern medicine because I would be a cripple if it wasn't because of all of my injuries in my racing and skiing days. So I also agree that it's important. Then there's um, what we would call um, in utero trauma, Mm -hmm. mother stressed. And this is, I think, way more pandemic than we realize is mom is is in her own stress because of her own unresolved early childhood stuff. Or she has to work way too much and can't rest and is just going, going, going abusive relationship or even a relationship that isn't abusive, but they, she can't be herself because of our domestication. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and just before we hit record, I was telling you about my year. I had some a surgery this year um, and I've had many, there is something called, we call it surgical trauma, anesthesia trauma. Dental procedures can be very traumatic, even if it's just a cavity when you're five, but no one told you what was going to happen and you screamed and wanted to fight out and you were pinned down, right? right? Like, so trauma in my camp is anything that occurs to the human system in which you cannot process and make sense cognitively of it or in a feeling way where you can self-regulate. So let me, I'll define that a little bit. So let's just say I am five years old and I fall off my bike and I scratch my knee and I'm wailing, right? It's, and I've, you know, you open up skin, there's sand in there, it stings, it hurts. It really does hurt. And let's just say that's the first experience I've had as a human breaking skin and having an injury. If my mother comes up to me and scoops me up and says, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Just get back on the bike. Let's keep going. You got to learn. I am in a stress response. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time to feel that stress response, reorient to the environment 
and bring my chemical, my stress chemicals down. Sure, I can get back on the bike. Just like if I'm, knock on wood, in a car accident tomorrow, if it's dangerous and I'm not incapacitated, I will drive off the road to be safe and get off the highway, right? Right, so there's also distinctions to this, but to go back to the five-year-old example, so mom scoops me up, puts me back on my bike, I'm crying, my face is red, all these things, and I'm riding, but my riding isn't going to be good, and I'm not going to learn it because I'm stressed. I'm afraid. I'm still in a fear response, and I'm being flooded with all these emotions Mm -hmm. and sensations that are so new, but she's forcing me because she's that overachiever, stoic mother that many of us may have had. I didn't, but many had or fathers, or grandparents, or school teachers, you know, name your person, and you keep riding, but because you are not aware, you shut, you shut down, so you're going to just shut down, you're going to freeze, so fall off the bike, you go into what we would call a sympathetic, autonomic nervous system response, someone know it as fight, flight, Mm -hmm. even though you're not fighting and fleeing, there is an adrenaline something's wrong, skin's broken, immune system starts to do its things, you know, foreign material, hurt, maybe the wind is knocked out of you. So, you know, you're having to get your oxygen back on. So that's sympathetic fight flight. But if you're pushed to keep going, as a human, you're going, and at five, you're going to obey your master. Mm-hmm. Okay, mom. And you don't say that, oh, right? Sure. You've had a five-year-old, like, And I know you would never do this to your five-year-old knowing you, (laughs) but many do. And so what happens is that little system flips over into what's called the freeze. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the parasympathetic nervous system that isn't the rest digest, which we need. It's a part of the parasympathetic nervous system that puts us into shock. It puts us into shutdown. It puts us into dissociating from our body. And so little Johnny is now dissociating from his body, but doesn't really know it. Yeah. Little Johnny goes home. They get ready for dinner. Then little Johnny throws a tantrum because he can't tell why something doesn't feel right. Right. And then you have trouble with the dinner table. Well, why are you eating your food? I'm not hungry. He doesn't know why. And then he gets maybe sent to his room. You're being a bad little boy. I mean, I'm making this story up, but there's some version of that that happens all the time. And so someone might say, oh, come on, Irene, that's just life. You, that's how a kid learns how to self-regulate. And I say, no, that's actually putting that kid into dysregulation. And if a parent is doing that, chances are they're doing that in other situations too. So that would be something where he might, as an adult, remember that. Because at five, we start to retain memory. Mm -hmm. However, when it's that kind of intensity and trauma, we kind of take it out of our brain. We don't remember. We don't form the memory. Sometimes we will. Sometimes we won't. And so we wonder why then I'm kind of fast forwarding when we're 42 and we have something stressful coming on we push through not even realizing our system is in a stress response. Our digestion is off. We actually have low energy. So we drink more coffee. We eat more sugar. We do whatever we have to do to push. And then we push and push and push. And we're not, we're disconnected. We're not aware of this body. And one of the things Courtney, that is so common in our world is we just assume that we die as humans from some sort of illness or ailment, Mm -hmm. right? There's kind of this culture of, oh, well, what did they die from? When someone says, oh, my mother passed, oh, what was wrong? You know, and, and we've just gotten used to that as opposed to my mother was, and this isn't my mother, but healthy, jogging, making their own food, mentally sharp, not needing any medications vibrant, goes to sleep, doesn't wake up, just the body says, okay, that's enough. Right. And so the reason I'm going to the end of life is the research has shown through something called the ACE study, adverse childhood experiences study, that when we have situations like little Johnny and worse, so also um, alcoholism in the family, obviously all the abuses that we can think of, parents being divorced is actually an adversity growing up, 
parents that are mentally ill, parents that are physically unwell and able to care for us. I would even lump in there a family that's really big where no one really can give you any attention. And the kids are basically parenting themselves. These early stresses, adversities, we call them, if they are not dealt with at this nervous system level, I can confidently say that the research shows that we will pop out some kind of illness, some kind of cancer, some kind of autoimmune condition, addiction, even things like arthritis because yeah. of an, it's an inflammatory condition, right? Yeah. Heart disease, stroke. Anyway, so trauma, to come back to that, is the system being flooded with too much information, but then not having, especially when we're young, someone there to teach us how to be with it. So I'll finish up that story about little Johnny is let's say the good scenario would be he falls off the bike, wailing and crying. The parent comes up and of course, granted it's safe, sits down beside bedside manner and waits says, I'm here. Like, wow, that must really hurt. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, saying you've done that wrong or you're fine. Just wow, that looks really sore. Like I see you've got tears, like you're just observing and you know, mirroring what's going on. And that lets them know, okay, what I'm feeling isn't weird. Yeah. Let, okay. Right. And then at, at some point that kid will start to look up and then they'll, they'll reach for you. And then that's when you do it. And then that's when the system comes down. Yeah. And that vignette will teach that little one oh, when I have this heart pounding and red in my face, I'm going to be okay. I just need to wait and have, and that's how we learn self-regulation through co-regulation. Yeah. So what I hear in that is we have yeah. to allow stress to process. A hundred percent. And when we're in those macro and micro traumas, mm-hmm. we're often not allowing stress to process. And then we're not remembering these things necessarily mentally, but our body is clinging to the memory hundred percent, but we're disassociating from the body. Mm -hmm. So we really feel, we don't, we don't even feel what's happening physiologically, which yes. And I'll say there's one other, because there'll be someone listening to this saying, well, I feel too much. I feel everything. I have chronic pain. I feel everything. And that's accurate too. Sure. So there's, there's like a spectrum depending on how we were raised when someone has had a lot of insult to the body, whether again, it's abuse or surgical procedures, or just a parent that doesn't know how to care for their infant because they just don't know. So they're handling them rough. They're not attuning to their needs. They're letting them cry themselves to sleep. All these sorts of things that we, we know create dysregulation. A person might be they might get the, uh, what's the word, the wiring, uh, feeling all of that all the time. So again, what creates someone to become overly sensitive and feel everything versus someone be shut down? You know, I have theories around that. I think that the more stoic, be brave, you can do it, that creates more of the dissociation from the body. Whereas the kind of loosey goosey, let's just kind of flow and wow, she's fine. Let her cry, whatever. Let's not deal. That creates a little bit more of that over, over stimulus, over activated, but also combined often with high traumatic events like surgery, um, obviously abuse, that kind of thing. Um, So again, total spectrum, depending on the circumstance. That helps a lot. In my so unique. Yeah. To think about that spectrum. And yeah. I love, you know, cause you bring this up a lot in your classes and all of your videos and blogs and mm-hmm. talking about the healing process looking so radically different for everybody. Yep. yep. And th- I think that is a great example of it, right. That we, we all also express trauma differently. Some of us don't express it at all. We don't acknowledge it at all. And sometimes we're sort of in it, like we're marinating in it. Yeah. Which, it, yeah, well, it's fat. I mean, you're in Montana. I'm in British Columbia. Yeah. We all have, we have bears, right? Sure. Like bears in our neighborhood, not in my neighborhood in the city, but I could find one easily. If I went, I saw, you know, in the trails just on the other side of the bridge and our bears here and your bears in Montana are going to birth their babies and raise them exactly the same. Right. We can guarantee that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even a 
biologist of bears, right? Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever that would be. But, you know, they birth them. They immediately lick them. They care for them. They, they allow them to nurse. There's never, oh, you're not allowed to eat. Yeah. Go to your room, right? They sleep together, all of that. And so you can pretty much guarantee the same kind of reaction between bears here versus there, pending their food sources, of course. Humans don't have that. And that's why I think that's, it's like this, oh, right. Because we've been taught to heal things very by the book for certain things. Yeah. You have a chest infection and it's not getting better and you're coughing up green stuff, you probably need some antibiotics. Yeah. Right. I believe in that stuff. But when it comes to, I have debilitating anxiety or a fear of leaving the house or Crohn's or an, an autoimmune thing or deep depression, I can't say take this thing and it'll be done and you'll be fine in two weeks or even a year because the history of why that's there is going to be completely different. And so that's where I think it can be frustrating for some people who have been trying the quick techniques to calm. And sometimes we need a quick technique to calm. I will use them myself too, but I also have regulation at my system now Um, And usually they're not needed because the system does what it needs. But for someone who knows that they're still living in a state of dysregulation, which is indicative of these chronic conditions, not being able to just have your system come down naturally, always needing a resource to come down. That's a sign that there is not regulation in that system. Yeah. And then that, Courtney, is where the courses go into almost basics that are so ridiculous that they seem like nothing is really occurring, but it's bringing you back to that level of awareness, which we talked about at the beginning, but biological awareness and then connecting with our environment in a way that most mind-body methodologies don't teach. Yeah. Well, you also talk a lot about the right dosage, right? Because if you're already harboring a nervous system that is dysregulated, Yes. You talk about titration, Titration. I don't know if you want to go into that here, but I'm happy to have you do that. But just my understanding of what you teach is that you, you have to be careful about these techniques that you're applying in terms of what's the timing, what's the dosage, because your system is already jacked. And so if you overwhelm Mm -hmm. your system, Mm -hmm. With a really high dose of what seems like a very innocent modality, yeah. Yeah. it can actually create an adverse effect. A hundred percent. This and this is why, and it, it's hard for me. I don't really have a lot on my YouTube channel or on my free resources that are practical because, and there's a few things, and I leave them up there just so that there's something. But I've also had a few folks who have tried some things without listening to my urging to get educate the education into you first yeah. because they really want that quick fix because they've been struggling for so long. So I get it. But just the other day uh, I was on something, I was doing a YouTube live on um, a topic and someone said, when I did some anger expression, not with me, but somewhere else, like cathartic screaming, like getting the energy out, my system went into more fear. Yeah. Um, And I've heard that multiple times. I now can't sleep. I'm now jacked up in a sympathetic state. Mm -hmm. That is a clear sign that that system was not prepared for that level of activation because we actually need to experience that intense activation that little Johnny had when he fell off the bike as an adult to heal it, but we need to make sure that we've got the ground layer set. It's kind of like you would never take someone who cannot jog a mile and put them on the top of Everest and say, start walking. Right. You, it would be impossible. Yeah. The person would probably die. Right. And so that's an extreme example, but it's to prove a point that uh, most don't realize how much is stored in our human systems, not just from the trauma 
from, let's say, our life, but societal trauma, ancestral trauma. Um, we hold generations within us. You know, I was just reading a book the other day, Courtney. Um, uh, I can't even remember the name. Not important, but it was talking about all the children that worked in coal mines in the 1800s. Okay. In the U.S., like on the eastern seaboard. Yeah. And just, oh, my God, the, the conditions, the sickness, the slavery, yeah. like just just beating them with work, giving them no rest and them often dying because of malnourishment and all of that. It's like that was that that person, if they died, obviously didn't create more humans. But let's say that person did survive. Yeah. They had children into the wars. Right. First World War, Second World War, depression, yeah. all of that. Then they have kids. And there was none of this knowledge back then. Well, when you were talking earlier about the child example on the bike, I'm thinking how impossible it is for a parent to honor the regulation of a nervous system of a young child if they themselves have no connection or experience of that. You got Which it. Again, is why this, yeah. this work is just, it's so impactful yeah. on a glo- like a global scale. Our environment is better when we treat ourselves better. Mm-hmm. Our relationships are better. Mm-hmm. I mean, this infiltrates every Everything. facet of life. It does. The other thing I want to make sure we talk about, because yeah. I have so much appreciation for it, and I think it's so important and so overlooked, is that when we think about wellness... And of course, we love to box the movement aspect of wellness into fitness, right? Like more interval training, more strength training. And look, like I'm not arguing that those things can't be beneficial to the human body. But again, if you have somebody who has a lot of nervous system dysregulation, number one, are they going to be motivated to do those things? Probably not. But even if they did, would it actually be healthy for them? Probably not. But you have a way of incorporating movement into your work. Mm-hmm. Like you, you have such a powerful understanding of movement and of s- somatic work in general. Uh, can you speak a little bit to how movement is a vitamin in this yeah. recipe of nervous system regulation? Sure. Um, yeah. And like you said, the exercise thing is important. And yeah. I say the end goal is to be able to be vital enough and regulated enough to push your body with power and force to lift things, to climb up that mountain, to be able to run or, or whatever. However, um, some people, when we have this dysregulation, well, some people will push, I mean, gosh, the amount of triathletes and marathoners I worked with when I lived in the mountain town that I did back in my twenties and thirties, they were killing their bodies by doing too much Mm -hmm. exercise, right? They didn't realize that that was an addiction, but then there's kind of a camp of folks who would be considered definitely more weak in their constitution because they have been so unwell with chronic conditions, autoimmune, fibro, et cetera, et cetera. And so, yeah, it's not enough to say you're lazy, just get up off of the couch and start moving. It would be impossible for them to not only do that mentally, but their physiology wouldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people suffer from something called POTS, where um, you try to do something and the blood pressure does the opposite thing, like it flips. Mm -hmm. And that's the dysregulation, like you would expect if you start doing some jumping jacks or running on the spot, you want your heart rate and that to go up proportionally, right. To the activity to get yes. oxygen, all that, the movement. So there's, that is important. And then the movement piece that I bring into the work um, has a basis in something called the Feldenkrais method. That was one of the first things I studied after my university days, really teaching the body, the person, how to feel their movements mm-hmm be aware of their movements and use movement as a tool to notice your habits. Yes. And the developer of the work, Moshe Feldenkrais, long past uh, at a very ripe old age of 84, I believe, he was a physicist and engineer and a judo master and really understood human development, like baby development. And he healed a lot of his own injuries 
by going back to how babies move, learning how to roll, learning how to crawl, learning how to sit up properly. And just the way a baby would be on the floor exploring. And we forget that that time in a human's life is like so many connections are being made. Mm-hmm. Now, many kids are not allowed to just be on the ground and explore, at least not my generation, probably not your generation. We were in jolly jumpers and walkers and all these things. And, and footed um, pajamas. <laughs> It's just, you know, and all these, just all these contraptions, which were cool. But if you go to like tribal culture, they're not doing that. They're on the dirt floor, reaching for things and rolling. Right. Um, But what that does is when that little human is on the ground and they have to be a little stimulated, like you got to talk to them and make sure they're safe and all that sort of stuff. They're using their nervous system through their muscular system, through their sensory system to explore, to move, you're creating pathways. And so let's just say someone didn't get that. We want to bring that back in because part of, I think, people's inability to have this awareness is because that wasn't given to them at the outset. They weren't allowed to roam and crawl and kind of, you know, experiment. And that early experimentation sets the tone for our ability to explore later in life. Yeah. And right. you, you nailed such a good point too about movement is how we learn, right? 100%. It's how we integrate into our environment. 100%. Yeah. So if we're trying to yeah. reassociate with our bodies, we have to move. We have to move. And, and, and again, in the experience I'll, of movement, not just move, but actually be mindfully and aware, like with hyper awareness moving. 100%. And that's the difference between exercise and this sort of aware movement. So someone might say, well, Irene, what about yoga? I say, yoga can be great. But are you aware of what you're doing or is it so rote and so competitive that you're just trying to follow the person and you're not even aware of where your legs are? Mm -hmm. And that's the part that um, is so harmful is someone will have, and I've worked with a lot, a lot of my students are ex-yoga teachers Mm -hmm. and they get into this work and, and, you know, some still teach, but a lot are like, I can't do it. I can't follow a set routine because my body wants to explore into different places and spaces, right? But a lot of people will say, yeah, I've gone to this class and I got into this body position and it triggered something. Yeah. You know, I opened up my hips in a certain way. I opened up my neck in a certain way. I got breath into my shoulders that I've never had before. And then that sticky point is attached to some old somatic memory that's completely somatic that has no thought. And I, I had a panic attack in yoga class. And then they think that it's the yoga that it's, is the problem or they think they're the problem. And then, but there's no um, education. I was just to, say, say, to yeah. say, this actually might be that little Johnny moment where you didn't get activated, right? Like imagine um, often when you fall off a bike, you might hit the floor or the ground with your hands or your elbows. And so let's just say I'm making this story up. You're practicing a handstand or headstand or some or something even less and you kind of fall and you hit your elbow and it's not a big hit but it creates this reaction that is completely off scale because mm-hmm. you're fine yeah when we don't have the um mastery to track that sensation say i'm just going to go sit and feel this So you also have to have the wherewithal and confidence to leave the class Mm -hmm. or lay there and stop doing the routine. The instructor has to be aware that that's okay. Or else they'll be like, come on, get back up. Right. Right. They'll be like that mother, like on the bike, (laughs) you will miss Courtney, the opportunity to process that old, old thing. Yeah. So the body is giving us opportunities. It's like, there's this spooky thing where people will have the same injury over and over and over again, or the same accident or the same abusive relationship or the same addiction pattern, but just in a different kind of thing. It like the system is giving you a little clue, like, Hey, 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 like we're giving you another opportunity to feel this and process it. But if the human hasn't done the theoretical educational and body-based work to know, to even notice it, right. They're just, it's just going to get missed. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. So much. We have to like pause and highlight here. <laughs> first of all, I think the piece about just wellness professionals needing to be trauma informed, uh-huh. it, it just has to happen yeah. because like you said, it could be meditation. It could be yoga. It could be a spin class. Yep. And if, if we had leaders like wellness professionals mm-hmm. who could help their students to understand these processes, mm-hmm. we would heal a lot quicker in the way that we needed to heal, right? Not just getting more cardiovascularly fit or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is that your body is, of course, always communicating with you. Yep. And yet I think that the way our culture goes about, you know, being in relationship with the body is really a dictatorship right? Uh, this is what I me. want. Yeah. And so this is what you will do yes. versus a partnership, a relationship. Like that's a mm-hmm. completely different experience mm-hmm. than a dictatorship. And we have to be willing to listen, which you also alluded to addiction, which yep. we should probably just do a whole podcast on it. <laughs> yeah. But if we aren't listening to our physiology or Mm-hmm. We only allow our physiology to feel certain things. Mm-hmm. We're going to spend an awful lot of time mm-hmm. looking for substances and outside experiences to numb us. A hundred percent. So it's like this, again, it's just such a gateway to so much self-healing, not just physiological, but psychological, emotional relationship, all the things. Yeah. It, it almost sounds too good to be true, you know, <laughs> and I, I think. And I, I'm, I make that point quite deliberately because I know there's a lot of things out there that will say, this is going to fix all your things. And I'm not going to say that this is the only thing because you can do the nervous system work, but if you don't get outside and have fresh air and move your body, or if you don't change your diet to be healthier, I, and I will say kind of by default, when you get more of this on board, you see it starts to happen. Yeah. Like people do because you're actually in your organic self and you're listening to what your body needs. You're listening to your gut. You're listening to your cravings. Like you actually start to know when you need more protein or more salt or more vitamin C Like it's kind of hard to grasp that because we've been fed. I love your term using dictatorship. We've been dictated to by the guidelines. This is what you should do for your diet. This is what you, and it's like, some of that is okay, but I can tell you, I taught nutrition based like at sports level and exercise. And I was in the research world and the guidelines are not what the science says. Yeah. Like at all. Why that is. Who knows? That's like another five hours of talking. <laughs> I know, right? But but it's no, I mean, I really say that sincerely. It seems almost too good to be true. And at the risk of sounding a little too guru-ish, because that's not what I am, and you know that, you're I'm like, this is like a Tony Robbins thing, but it's like you gotta become your own guru, you know, that documentary he had. be be your own guru or something like that. And that's true because a good teacher, a good methodology teaches the person how to teach themselves. A hundred percent. Just like a good parent isn't parenting. They're actually teaching that little human how to be a human. Yes. And if we could just get that right, oh my gosh, like everything will change. Yeah. And so you're right. I mean, I love that the dictatorship, it's just so macro right now too. So it's this ability to be very sovereign. It's hard to be sovereign and know how to choose and listen to your intuition when your system has any form of dysregulation. You, it's so hard to self-trust. You can't. You can't. And I agree with you like that self-trust really is that's what's going to create health is being able to trust yourself in your choices, in your, in your ability to heal in all of the things. Yeah. And unless you have the capacity to process stress fully and integrate with your environment and all of the things that will always remain elusive to you yeah. to, to be self-trusting. And the other thing that I, I think for listeners that I just want them to hear, I have learned this the really hard way throughout my uh-huh. life. That <laughs> 
I'm a very stubborn person and yeah. there's a beauty to stubbornness. Like I yeah. think it's partly what makes me successful as a human, but it also of course is what depletes me as a human. Mm-hmm. And I can work really hard at something for a really long time and get to that place where if I'm being really honest with myself, like Courtney, is it working? Yeah. And when I find that that answer is no, Mm -hmm. I doing all the cardio, doing all the strength training, Mm -hmm. running myself ragged, not listening to my body, buffering with food, all the things. Why not try something radically different? Mm -hmm. Why not try the opposite? Mm -hmm. Right. And even in movement, like opposition is where we create expansiveness. It's where we create the stretch. It's where we get so much benefit. And so for someone who's listening to this, like, nervous system work. Like what? I just want to hear about like the strength training and the nutrition piece. Like I am telling you stay open-minded to this because I think you would be really pleasantly surprised at how much this can alter the state of your health. Because I've seen it. Irene, the number of people I have sent to your work is mind blowing. And I know that when somebody goes through your program, they're actually able to get more out of what I teach. I have a great story around that. Actually, a colleague of mine got into this work. It, he's a, a colleague in the somatic experiencing world, and he's a very active dude in the outdoors. And he had spent not a lot of time at the gym of of late. This was years ago, but he was working on regulating his nervous system through being in the training, um, working through my programs, and just immersing in this work. And he said to me. I went for a ski tour the other day or the other week and I, my aerobic capacity was like, it's never been before. And I have not been training my aerobic capacity. And I'm like, isn't that interesting? (laughs) And, and what I will make a connection with, because I haven't mentioned this. So that autonomic nervous system that governs the fight, flight, freeze and keeps us safe and puts us into stress reaction It also governs our cardiovascular system, our respiratory, our capillary exchange with oxygen, our digestion, our immune system, our lymph, our like how we grow our protein and all of it. It is completely governed by that autonomic nervous system. So if the autonomic nervous system is so busy with dysregulation and just keeping us safe or keeping us protected from the scary monsters that are out there, we're not going, we're, we're, our other systems are going to be taxed. And so, yes, it's going to feel like we have no energy, like we can't get enough oxygen to our muscles. And so it's not to be lazy, but there is this interesting shift that occurs when you get this stuff on board and then the work, like what you do is more effective. The creative work is more effective. People's careers go through the roof because they're actually working from their own inner source and not what mommy and daddy said you should do, for example. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I, 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 I love so much that through and through with your work, you talk about following the impulse and so much of what we have been taught as humans is to deny the impulse. Yeah. Don't like move. Even don't with do Christmas. these things. Oh yeah. 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 Like with Christmas coming up and, and, I mean, we just had help. We're recording this just after Halloween. And, and it's like, God, if you don't like those things, don't do them. <laughs> it's like, so I true. hate, I don't like Turkey. Like, why yeah. do we have to have a bird? Right. Like, let's make some pasta. You know, <laughs> I, I just, it, it's kind of, but, and again, there's nothing wrong with some ritual and tradition. And if you love that, that festive thing, then if you love it and you like it, But man, oh man, the amount of stress I've seen in families where they're doing what they're supposed to do because that's what they did when they were kids. And they haven't even stopped to ask, do I even like this kind of food? I know. Do I like buying gifts for people who don't even want these things? Mm -hmm. The amount of gifts, Courtney, I've thrown out. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. And I, and I, when I say, please don't get me anything, I really mean it. Yeah. So there's a boundary there, too. And families don't listen to you. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a, that's a problem. Yeah. So there is this very interesting, um, you know, there's a lot of healing that happens at the familial level too. Right. When a person and, and you will be a black sheep, like yeah. most of the students I have are the black sheep and they're changing the patterns 
in the family dynamic. And that's wonderful because we're generational pattern generation. We're unique. We're not meant to be tribe. I mean, there's this, this mm, love affair with being in tribes and communities, but there was a lot of bad stuff that happened in tribal culture too. And so I think there is a level of individuality that we get back. I don't think I know. Of course. When we get this biology on board, because then, and I believe in a soul, I I think then our true soul does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. When we, but we have to have the biology on board. This is why spiritual bypassing is such an issue. Yeah. Is people are trying to connect to that higher realm, but it's actually, um, it's a bit disjointed because the biology isn't on board. But when you have the biology on board, the rest just kind of falls into place. It's so true. I always say like, when you know yourself better, right, you can, you can lead yourself better and you can do so much better in the world because it's coming from such an authentic place You got it. rather than a box of shoulds and, you know, must nots. And this is what so-and-so did. So this is what you should do. Like you really, this work brings you back to yourself. It does literally on a cellular level. Yes. Yeah. Cellular, environmental, relational, emotional, behavioral, all the alls. It's all All the (laughs) alls. alls. So let's tell listeners because you have, um, you're doing a special discount for the 21 Mm -hmm. day nervous system tune up, which is fabulous. Like if you want a really great overview Mm -hmm. of the strategies and types of things that Irene teaches, like I have been in that program so many times, like just to revisit certain lessons, Mm -hmm. um, So I know that if you are someone who's interested in nervous system work, you will get tremendous benefit from this program. So let's tell them about it. Yeah. So it's called the 21 day nervous system tune up. It was actually curated from my law, my bigger program, smart body, smart mind, which I know you, you are in currently. Um, but we wanted something that a person could start at any time of the year. And that wasn't as big of a commitment, obviously financially, but also time-wise, So while it's called the 21 days, it's 21 days of lessons and prompts. You don't have to finish it in 21 days because that's the first question that people ask is, oh, I don't have time right now. And that's one mindset that I really like to say. If you're saying that, check that a little bit. It's like because we, again, Courtney, have been taught through the school system. You have to get your homework done tomorrow, right? Right. you're going to fail if you don't get it in by the end of the week. And so this is what's kind of, you got to again, flip this on the head. This, this thing isn't school, but it is learning and you want to self pace it. So it's 21 days. Um, It is a combo of theory and practical. There's a very robust biology of stress. I call it video training. There's five videos, which for that alone is worth the price. It is, I think. (laughs) And I updated them. I updated them this year to bring in a little bit, not a little, a lot more of the early trauma stuff that, you know, we won't have time to get into, but it gets into that. It gets into our early um, wiring at the deep vagus level level. So vagus nerve level, it breaks down the systems of the nervous system. It breaks down memory, the different kinds of memory that we store in our body, but also something called declarative memory, episodic memory, how these memories work in our body. Um, it gets into the animal versus human situation. I call it African safari. And I actually show you within the videos, things in the wild and like, this is what happens here. And this is what doesn't happen here. And this is what happens to the human um, and then we got to go through the blueprint of um, just what needs to occur um, for the system to gain more regulation. So that's the theory. And then the practical, at this point, there's nine lessons in there. Um, I call them lessons because you're learning, even though you're active in them. Yeah. You're listening and or you're kind of going along with the, the movements. And there, it's really subtle. It's not like big movements, but orienting is one of the key ones. It's sort of like the gold standard, learning how to follow impulse, learning how to track sensation, but also painful sensation, Mm -hmm. because a lot of folks have intense sensation or pain. And there's this thing, it's like, well, just clear your mind and don't, don't notice the pain. Well, actually we have to notice that pain, but we have to pendulate it. That's a fancy word. So little dips in 
dips out, but also connect to something else that's less painful Mm -hmm. and then go back in. So it's like this blending of inner experience with outer experience with resourcing. Um, And then there are some movement lessons in there that are very Feldenkrais style, um, simple, but powerful. Um, And that's, that's, that's it. I mean, it's, it sounds simple in, in theory when I speak it out, but some of these lessons you can do for literally years. Yeah. And I actually have several students who have purchased this program that are always referencing it and speaking to it. And, and, and and kind of like we said earlier in the episode, your healing process is unlike anyone else's healing process. The timing of it will be different. So there is no right way to approach this, Mm -hmm. but having forever access to this library of resources is honestly a no brainer. Like if you really are interested Totally. And just to, that prompted me, everything is on a site. So like it's a website yep. with everything laid out really, really well. There are some extra resources, some bonus stuff in there. Um, and then we've moved everything away from Facebook for the forum. So on each lesson page, there's a comment section. Mm-hmm. So you can um, ask a question. And I have at this point, two colleagues that go in who are trained in the stuff I do and they answer questions. So you're not just there alone. Um, you have to use that resource, of course. <laughs> don't don't DM me on Instagram if you have a question about that program. Use the course like it's like you're going to school, yeah, and you're going to the TA room to ask questions about your math homework, right? Yeah, and it's brilliant because even even if you aren't asking a particular question, just reading through reading. other people's experience yes. of the same lessons, it helps to normalize it because there's everyone has a radically different experience. But as you read through what people are going through, it's very comforting to know that you are not this strange human having this no. bizarre human experience. You're having a human experience that a lot of other people are having too. <laughs> and that's a great, you again, prompted me, you're having a human experience. And because we're so diverse in how we were brought up and this yes. soul piece, yes, it is unique to us. I, I believe, I know there are some people that believe in animal soul and all that. And yes, yes, yes. But we've got this higher brain that is so powerful. And then we have this other stuff and you're right. When you can read the other um, comments, you see the, the vast array of difference in how people experience the same thing. And what that gives you, I think is an understanding of just human, human conditioning. Gives you empathy. It gives you empathy. Now, you know why that person screamed at you on the street when you did nothing, right? It just, it actually drives you and it, it's a practice, you know, I'm not perfect by any means, but it, it gives you a lens to process and integrate and go, oh, I see why that, I see why that person, I see why my parents did that, why this happened, why that happened, et cetera. Yeah. So I, I, I want to highlight this word because before we go that, that you use the word practice, which I use all the time as well, because this is not like a, I'm going to go through 21 days of this program and I get this particular outcome by a certain date and I'll never have to touch this again. That is not at all what this is. This is a practice that you will hopefully embed into your life for the rest of your life because your nervous system is dynamic. It's always changing by different inputs. And so this is like a skill set that you will literally carry with you the rest of your life. 100%. It's not, um, I kind of likened it to eating actually and exercise. Like you'd love it again, right? I mean, we're both in fitness. The reason why that world is so screwed is people don't realize it. It's such a cliche word, but it's a lifestyle. It's long term, right? You can't just eat well for a couple of weeks and then throw it out the window forever. And so do people try, (laughs) I know. And then they wait till December to find the next thing that they want to do. And right. And so, but no, this is, this is lifelong. And I will say not to scare people because they're like, Oh my God, I'm going to have to be doing these exercises every single day. Right. As you get better at regulating your system, you start to do these things organically. Of course. But people have to understand if they didn't get the solid wiring growing up, it's like you're learning a second language as an adult. That's my analogy. If you've never learned German from mother tongue, it's going to take some time to learn. Trust me, I've tried. It's not easy. And even then, like you're not going to 
hear it and know how to write it and all these things. But if you had that as your mother tongue, it's just, oh yeah, even if you're not speaking, it comes back. Absolutely. And so the nervous system is the same because it's, it falls into that wiring process of the sensory, the motor experience, et cetera. So yes, yes, that's what the 21 days is all about. And you're doing a hundred dollar discount. With, yeah. I have a coupon that we'll put on the, the page of this web uh, yeah. where this podcast yeah. is housed and all, yeah. this, all the places. Yeah. It's regular 297 us. And we're, we only, at this point, we've just been doing that once a year, cyber Monday, hundred dollars off. Yeah. So it is a good deal. I love it. Yeah. And I, I, I if you couldn't tell, I'm a huge fan. Yes. Uh, I've been through the program and I recommend it to really all my students. Like mm-hmm. there is probably not a week that doesn't go by that mm-hmm. your name doesn't come up at least once. That's which cool. I love because yeah. it, it's just been such an amazing resource for my community. Um, and I know how much benefit everybody is reaping from the work. So that's good. Yay. Yeah. So keep doing Yay. what you're doing. So I important. Will. It's so powerful. I like my day job. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more holiday time, but I still like my day job. So I'm yeah. <laughs> so glad to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're welcome. And um, just, it's so, so good to just connect again and, and see how far you've come with this work and how much you love it. And so good. Amazing. If you enjoyed what you heard on this show today, I want to remind you that Irene is offering listeners of today's podcast $100 off her 21-day nervous system tune-up course on Cyber Monday, which is November 29th. I have personally worked myself through this course many times over, and I can say that it is 100% worth the price. In fact, I think at the regular price of $297, it's underpriced. And this offer is giving you 100 bucks off. What you learn in the 21-day tune-up won't just help you for 21 days. It will impact you for the rest of your life. Now, the coupon code can be found on the page of my website where this episode is housed. Again, it's only good on November 29th. Also, I realize that we're a few weeks out from Cyber Monday at the time that this podcast drops, so you might forget to register. If you would like some reminders about this date coming up, register for my newsletter by going to graceandgrit.com forward slash rumble and rise. Once again, graceandgrit.com forward slash rumble and rise. And as we get closer to the date, I will remind you about registration and I will email you the coupon code. Thank you for listening to the Grace and Grit podcast. It is time to mend the fabric of the female health story. And it starts with you taking radical responsibility for your own self-care. You are worth the effort. And with a little grace and grit, anything is possible.